Hello again everyone, this is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com here with everybody's favorite submarine, the German Type 7. I want to show you what it is, how it works, and get it out to the pond. So as I mentioned, we are talking today about a German Type 7 submarine, the most populous type of U-boat during World War II and very common subject for modeling for a lot of RC submariners, um, obviously because it looks so darn cool. This particular boat is not the ARC model Type 7 kit, but rather an older fiberglass model kit putting out by a very talented modeler by the name of Dan Catcher up in Canada, marketed under his company name DK Models. Absolutely gorgeous model and uh, previous owner did an exceptional job putting it together. I want to show you the boat. We're going to start at the bow, work our way back and just point out a lot of really cool details. So as I mentioned, this is uh, not a plastic hull, this is a fiberglass layup. So it's exceptionally rigid, nice and strong. As I mentioned before as well, a lot of beautiful details here. We've got all of the, the cleats uh, and the bollards in here. And I want to show you um, this feature here, which is really cool, that we'll get into a little bit. This is actually one of the two hold downs, so if you give this a quarter turn twist, it actually locks the upper hull down to the lower hull without uh, showing a bolt or a screw or messing with the scale looks of the boat. Um, I'll also point out that this boat is split at the waterline, a feature that I really, really like because uh, it makes it really easy to paint and because the waterline um, hides the seam when it's underway you don't see it even if it is right next to you up on the shore um, we've got a beautiful fiberglass deck in here that's all been uh, etched and cut out these slots do actually go all the way through which is uh, a really cool feature um, we got our deck gun there all of our antennas with the floats on them beautiful uh, sail up on there and this periscope uh, is actually functional so you notice the top is not uh, you know perfectly to scale and that's because this is a 2.4 gigahertz boat and we have uh, the access point for the 2.4 gigahertz antenna this is completely removable for transportation and storage as is uh, the little scale flag back here this just pops right out and pops right back in again. Beautiful little uh, feature of the boat. Uh, and then moving in, uh, into the, the back of the boat, um, the features that, that you maybe didn't notice yet, but you certainly will when we turn them on, we've got full LED lighting. Uh, port and starboard navigation lights as well as a, a stern light on the back of the conning tower. And then moving into the back, uh, we can see the, the last uh, light navigation light, the stern light of the boat back here, and the one um, bolt on here that uh, holds the stern back. In addition to these hold downs, there are also magnets that snap that deck down. Really love the, the finish of this boat. That line is really, really tight. It's a beautiful, beautiful boat. Let's talk about the, the drive system for this boat. So this is um, an older style D and E miniatures gas ballast subdriver, um, and actually this was even before uh, Dave was using the moniker subdriver. So this would would be termed his WTC or water tight cylinder. Um, we've got dual motor power, um, some nice beefy motors in there running through a three to one gearbox, uh, which is on the inside there, and then there's their output shafts. We've got three linkage shafts back here with magnetic connectors, um, three mini-sized servos, an automatic pitch controller. We have our brushed electronic speed controller in there and our electronic switch. Uh, so this is actually um, has a remote on off switch as well. If we spin this over, you can see the 2.4 gigahertz receiver 
uh, and this is an eight channel receiver. And we've got uh, an inline fuse here to make sure that we don't injure any of the electronics if something were to go bad. Um, this is also a pretty good angle to show the linkages for the ballast system. So as I mentioned, this is a gas ballast um, boat. That linkage moves forward and back. When it goes forward, the vent opens up, all the air is released, the ballast tank fills and the model submerges. If you pull that linkage in, it depresses that little Schrader valve right there, which opens up the passage to the uh, liquid air storage vessel here, this copper vessel, uh, and it blows ballast surfacing the boat. Uh, here we've got the main drive battery. This is a 1500 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery pack that lives in the bow of the boat. And we've got our uh, 10 channel 2.4 gigahertz radio link radio. Um, and then on the back, we've got our key fox. And this is what turns the model on and off. Nice and easy. So the next step um, that we have here, I wanna show you how we get into the boat. Uh, we're gonna install the watertight cylinder, check all of the functions and get it ready for the pond. Okay, access to the hull, as I mentioned, is super easy. We're just gonna give a quarter turn on the bollard on the front there, quarter turn on the uh, screw on the back there. Just make sure that that's disengaged. Yep, that is. We're just gonna lift everything straight up, and that's it. Um, since we got this off, let's take a look at the bottom part of the hull there. We got some flotation foam in there, uh, wiring for the LED lights, and this is the LED light connector right here. Uh, looking up through here, this is the last important part to uh, take a look at. Um, that little aluminum hole is where you feed the 2.4 gigahertz antenna through. So let's set this down and we're going to go through one step at a time. It's actually a really easy process. We're going to grab our battery. We're going to come up to the bow here. This uh, power connector just feeds through the uh, little opening in this bulkhead and it rests right in the bottom just like that doesn't go anywhere it can't go anywhere now that that's done we're gonna drop our cylinder in um, some things to notice here we got the 2.4 gigahertz antenna and then we've got the main power leads and you'll see there is a, a separate pigtail right there for the LED lights but for now, we're just gonna kinda get these cables out of the way. And we are going to pull this pin, this little L pin that pins this bulkhead down and that's what locks the cylinder in place. So we're just gonna pull this aside for now, open this up, drop in our cylinder and we're gonna slide it forward. Slide it forward here. So that's gonna allow us to install our drivetrain. This is the trickiest part of the operation because you've got two shafts to align simultaneously. Oh, so it looks like actually you want to do the, the port side first. It's just like a tiny bit longer than the other side. I couldn't remember which one was which. There you go. So you can use the, uh, the prop there to spin that shaft and make sure that the little tabs on the dog bones are aligned. And now that they're both kind of resting in there, you just kind of wiggle these a little bit until the uh, arms line up. So you see that just kind of locked into place. We got our connectors, one, two, three. Those are all snapped into place. And now here's kind of the, the magic of this whole assembly. This arm goes down and it locks down on that pin. So now the cylinder can't move forward or back and it can't rotate and it can't come up. So we grab our pin, slip this into place, and now the cylinder is locked down and can't go anywhere. I'm gonna take our antenna, slip that underneath that bulkhead, and we're gonna do something that I really should have done before. So we're gonna, we'll, we'll back up, back up, take this pin out, 
we want, we want these cables underneath just because it kind of drives me nuts to have things loose. So we'll have the antenna and the ground on one side and the power cable on the other. There we go. That is a lot more neat and tidy. Power cable goes into the back. We'll grab our battery connector. If I can get that out here. There we go. We will connect that to the battery. So now that is all connected. We can we can tuck that down, but we're not going to do that quite yet. What we want to do is grab our Well, actually, you know what? Before we put the top on, let's check the functions of the boat. So we're going to turn the radio on. Radio always goes on first, and then power on the boat. We got some important lights here. We've got a light on the electronic speed controller, and um, that tells us that our model's receiving power. So let's check the, uh, the functions of the boat. Channel one, which is the uh, right stick horizontal. I'll pull this out so you can actually see that. Right stick horizontal, there's our, our rudder throws. It's a really neat linkage. If you take a look at the back there, you can see that moving. We've got really good deflection, actually probably a little bit too much, but uh, better to have a little bit too much than too little. You can always change that through the menu in the boat. We've got our uh, forward dive planes. If you go up to the front there, you can see those working. On the other side, um, channel four isn't connected to anything, so that horizontal is, is not connected to any. And then the uh, the throttle, we've got forward, nice and smooth, even at low RPM, and reverse. And uh, if I remember correctly, this is actually um, capped out at fifty percent of the total. Um, power or, or RPMs that this cylinder is capable of. They're actually 7.2 volt uh, motors and so even at maximum uh, they're probably only going to be getting about five or six which is more than enough to get this boat up and moving really really quickly even at, a, at too fast of a scale speed. Um, on the back here we've got the stern plane override. Now these are on an automatic pitch controller. You can see them move as I move the boat up into a dive, those stern planes attempt to bring it back into a level operation. And then I can override those with the uh, slider on the back of the radio right here. So what that allows you to do is when you are submerged, you can actually uh, manually adjust those stern planes so that you get a perfectly level boat and the other thing that you can do, because all RC submarines like to drop the stern in a turn, you can actually put those into a down angle and that'll lift up the stern, keep the boat nice and level throughout the turn. Um, and then the last thing that we've got here is our ballast control. If you want to come in closer here, we can take a look at that. Nice and easy, big three-way switch, down goes down, vent opens up, all the air comes out. Go back to neutral, and then uh, you can hear that gas coming out. That's what brings it back up to the surface. Part of all of that, if we're gonna, if we would pretend, for example, that we were um, patrolling at this speed, is the uh, the fail-safe functionality. So, if for whatever reason the boat loses signal from the transmitter, it goes into fail-safe mode, and that's all completely customizable through the transmitter. The receiver acts as a standalone unit, and it knows what to do if it loses signal. So we're gonna, we're gonna fake a loss of signal event by turning off the radio. What should happen is the propeller should stop, the stern planes should go to full rise, the forward planes should go to full rise, and the gas ballast system should engage. So let's see if that works. And it does. All 
And I just turn the radio back on, and it's like nothing happened. The model just kind of picks up right from where it left off. So what I'm going to do now is, uh, is turn this off, and we're going to put our hull on. I'm going to do this without looking at what I'm doing, which is going to be a little bit challenging. We're going to go into our antenna housing right there. And we are going to make up our lights. Now the way that this is wired, and this was done intentionally, is the lights will come on if battery power is connected. And this is a, just a really good indication that your model is powered on. And the reason I do this is because that electronic switch will drain power. So I want a visual indication that the model is using power from the battery so you don't forget to disconnect everything when you're done. With that all being done, we're going to just going to feed up our antenna a little bit more here until it comes right out the top. There we go. You want inch and a quarter sticking out. We start at the back and you can see these tabs. These tabs need to go inside. Let me drop this down. Now we got it, beautiful. So we'll do a quarter turn on the back, that locks the front, throw the back down, quarter turn on the front, that locks the front down. And this boat is buttoned up and ready for the water. Now these LEDs um, do not draw a lot of power at all. So I would actually feel pretty comfortable depending on how far the pond is from your house um, to leave those LED lights on. They're, they're probably only pulling something like um, 40 milliamps or 50 milliamps or, or something crazy like that. These are just small um, 1.5 millimeter uh, LEDs. So you got it in the, in the vehicle, you can bring it to the pond. When you're ready to go, you can turn it on and uh, you should be ready to uh, do your pool side or pond side test of all the functions, making sure that everything works, and then you're ready to drop it in the water. Well, there you go, everyone. Uh, an overview, in-depth overview of this 148th scale DK models, German Type 7 RC submarine. Uh, we are gonna leave you with some footage of this boat at the pond. Um, it was a ton of fun to drive. Uh, I really, really liked it on the surface, especially. And that's where most of the time was spent in these World War II fleet boats. Really, they were surface craft that could submerge. Um, so just like its full-size counterparts, this model really loves spending time on the surface. It cuts an amazing profile. It looks absolutely beautiful. We'll share some footage with you on that. What I would love for you to do, if you like these videos, please like and subscribe. It helps us out a lot here at the Dry Docks. Uh, if you have comments or questions, you can leave me a message in this video or reach out anytime. Bob at NautilusDryDocks.com. And with that, we are going to let you go. Thanks for watching. We will catch you next time.